everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Stay Home, Make History. In this episode, we're going to be turning cardboard into leather. And we're going to be making um, something that looks like an old leather bound 17th century diary for writing in about our strange times. In strange times, people often recorded the events of their lives. Samuel Pepys wrote about the Great Fire of London. John Twentyman, the owner of the pub in Newark Market Square, wrote about the three sieges of Newark. They wrote with pen and ink in leather-bound books. We are going to make one a little like this. To make your own 17th century leather-bound book, you will need some cardboard packaging, like a cereal box, some scrap paper, some scissors, some thread and a needle, some paint and a brush, a sharp pencil and some plasticine or blue tack, and some glue, some PVA glue. Let's start by making the cover of our book. And we want to turn our piece of thin card into something like this piece of leather, which is flexible and soft and a little bit textured. And we're going to do that by kneading our card until it looks a bit like fabric. So you need to cut a piece of cereal box or packaging to the size that is about twice the size of the book you want. So my book is going to end up around about that size with a cover folded in half. And what we're going to do to try and make it look like leather is to crush all the fibres of the cardboard. So start by rolling up your piece of cereal box, like that, and then fold it in the opposite direction. Now this is quite hard on the hands, and you might want to pass this to a few other people to help you. Unroll it a little bit. And then you can see that we're starting to crease the surface of our cardboard. Now you need to do this quite carefully because what will start to happen is you'll get little tears all around the edge and that is fine, that actually helps our final cover look quite aged and old. So don't worry too much if that happens a little bit but we want to try and limit how much that is happening. So I'm just going to keep on kneading and the cardboard will become softer and softer and I'm going to squash each section, roll it and unroll it and crush it in different directions. And as it gets softer, I can start using it a little bit like Play-Doh and putting it into my hands and kneading it like I was kneading plasticine or something like that. Now your cardboard will start to look very soft and very much like fabric with creases all over it. And you will notice that the printed laminated part of your packaging will start to come away. And you can peel it off altogether. You can see that I've got a couple of little tears there and I'm not too worried about that. And so you can keep that because that actually makes old looking paper. But you won't need that for the cover. And now you will find it's a lot easier to keep on kneading. And you're just going to knead it for a few more minutes. And now my piece of cereal box has become something that feels and looks a little bit like leather. Um, it has a few rips in it and you could decide to snip that off and make a smaller cover. But I'm just going to leave it because I like the way that it looks aged. Um, now you could leave it like that because leather comes in all colours. But I've got some brown paint so I'm going to paint it now to look like old leather. I've diluted my brown acrylic paint so that it's a little bit runny and I've got some newspaper underneath my pretend leather and on top of a tray and then I'm just going to paint my leather. I'm going to paint it on this side, I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to paint it on the other side and then if I need to I'm going to do a second coat. Now while that's drying I just want to show you some other kinds of cardboard um, that I've tried. So you could use a soft corrugated cardboard 
like the kind you get in a big cardboard box, big cardboard grocery box. That's quite a lot harder on the hands, but if it's soft enough, you could have a go. And the result is something that really does look like very thick cowhide, which might look like a really nice old book. And you could also use something slightly thinner, which would be something like Easter egg boxes. And those come in quite nice colours. So if you've still got any of those left, you could try kneading those. This would make a nice green leather cover. And if you have a craft cupboard with thin corrugated card in, such as people use for crafting, you could have a good go at kneading that. And that may not even need to be painted. That actually has quite a leathery look. And I've also tried kneading um, some other kinds of packaging. This was a breadsticks box. And the inside of that is also quite a nice buff coloured leather, which you could use without painting at all. Now my cereal box leather has dried and I, it, I've made it brown on one side and on the other. And just as a final strengthening and shiny layer, I've just brushed some PVA glue over it and dried it on a sunny day outside actually. And that really does start to get it looking like real leather. So now we can make the pages for our book. And it actually looks quite nice to mix lots of different kinds of paper. I'm using paper from an old notebook and you could use paper from a school exercise book, um, from old birthday cards, or computer paper or any sorts of paper that you have lying around at home um, and you want to make sure that your paper is about the size of your cover perhaps a little bit smaller and you need to fold your cover in half and fold your paper in half and put your paper inside your cover lining it up with the spine of your cover and this is where your sharp pencil and piece of blue tack or plasticine come in handy. So you're going to make three holes now, one at each end and one in the middle, right the way through your pages and your leather cover. So I've made myself three little dots with my pencil, one at each end and one in the middle. And I'm going to start with the one in the middle. I'm going to place my book and pages over the plasticine or blue tack and then push the point of my pencil through all the layers. Then I'm going to keep it nice and still and do the same at the top and at the bottom. And then I'm going to take my needle and thread. You don't need to use a needle. You could use a thicker thread and wrap a little bit of sticky tape around the end and push the end of the thread through your holes. But I have got my thread threaded onto my needle and I've tied a knot in the end of my thread. And I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to push my needle through the hole and pull it until the knot stops it. And then I'm going to go back in again on the outside in my middle hole. Oops. And then I'm going to come up and back out in my top hole. And then I'm going to come back down into my middle hole and then I'm going to tie my ends together at the bottom. So now you've bound your pages into the leather cover of your book and they should turn just like a notebook and of course you can put as many or as few pages into your leather bound book as you like. Now you might like to leave your book like that or you might like to decorate it. You could use a piece of leather made from another kind of packaging so that you can write your name on the front. And if you have any of your Easter egg wrapping left over, you could fold it into a strip to make some metal foiling to go on your cover. You could tie beads onto the binding of your book and you could use shiny pens or crayons to decorate the leather as well. The choice is yours. And inside your book, you can write the story of your life, or you might like to make a 17th century commonplace book, which was a book where people collected all the interesting things they'd read and copied them down. This could become your own special diary or scrapbook.
If you've watched our Make Your Own Charles the First video, you will know that you can make your own quill pen for writing in your old book. I have written with a dip pen and ink the word journal and I'm going to stick that on the front of mine. <laughs> Thank you.